Okay, let's get started on the IK clavicle. Uh, we're going to do some controls for the clavicle because at this point, all we have is controls for the arm. So we can move the IK arm, but there's no movement on the clavicle whatsoever, and we want to be able to control that. We're not going to use the FK clavicle for that purpose uh, because this FK clavicle is designed to work with the rest of the chain. So what we're going to do is create a separate rig for the... Uh, FK clavicle and uh, we're gonna divide it in two I'm gonna create a manual IK clavicle rig which is very simple and then we're gonna create an auto clavicle rig and let's start with the manual one and basically the purpose uh, of this rig is just to enable us to move the clavicles so that the uh, character can for example shrug his shoulders and do movements such as that so let's create a locator and we're gonna match it uh, to the clavicle bone so it goes right there to the root and uh, let's make him smaller okay and we're gonna call this CNS it's a constraint locator R clavicle aim okay so this guy is gonna be aiming at something at what well at something obviously at the shoulder of the character so let's add another locator and this guy we're going to match him also to the clavicle bone so it comes here but now we're gonna set the match position over to the uh, first joint on the arm so basically what it what we did is we matched it in position over to the shoulder area but the rotation is the same as a clavicle. So both locators have exactly the same orientation. Okay, so, so far so good. Uh, let's now uh, get everything working together. And for that purpose, the first thing I'm gonna do is, oh, well, let's rename him. And this guy is going to be called locator r clavicle actually IK clavicle target and this guy is going to be also IK clavicle aim there you go so we have those two guys and I'm going to create a group locator and I'm gonna match it also to the clavicle oops we need to match everything okay there he is and we're gonna rename him to group R manual clavicle okay and we're going to take the two creators we created the two locators we created and put them inside of this group okay so that takes care of zeroing the transforms on our first locator here and then on this locator we should see the same except with an offset on x okay so great all we need to do now is to take this first clavicle and create a direction constraint towards the uh, second, I mean, not clavicle, the second locator. So we just create the direction constraint. It's done. Uh, make sure compensation is on because as you can see, the locators are slightly rotated. If you don't have compensation on, they're going to be straightened out and we don't want them to do that. And uh, well, that's pretty much it at this point. If I take this guy and move it around, you can see that is moving. So, so far so good. The last thing that remains is to create a control to move all this. So let's create uh, an additional locator. And him, we're going to match to our locator on the shoulder. Okay. And what we're going to do is give him a different shape. Uh, well, first, let's call him control our uh, IK clavicle okay and uh, let's turn on our locator shapes replace this with a plane not solid aligned on Y there we go and let's make him smaller and I'm going to display the geometry because again I want this plane to be easily selectable 
So let's make him thinner like so. Let's say uh, 60 millimeters wide by 120 high. And now let's offset him on Z. So he's above the shoulder of the character. There you go. So that's the clavicle control. Actually, he's a tad big. So let's make him uh, a little bit smaller. There you go. That's our clavicle control. The last thing that remains is, uh, well, of course, let's give him the IK color which is a deep dark red and uh, let's zero out his transforms and we're gonna move him to the controls IK folder and now we're going to parent this uh, manual clavicle to something in our rig. So first let's locate again the uh, clavicle joint and you will see that right now this joint is parented to uh, spine 05. That's the joint we have. Uh, you might see that I've been adding some colors and stuff. So we're gonna parent our manual clavicle uh, to the same joint. So let's do that. Now he's parented. As you can see, the drawing changed because uh, Moto will draw the actual uh, connecting shape only for the first connection in the list, and in this case is the manual clavicle. I don't want that. I want it to be the spine 06 joint, so now everything goes back into place. For these guys, we just have lines. And let's now open the manual clavicle. Um, folder and we're gonna get our joint not this one this one and we're gonna parent it to the aim we're gonna make it the child of the aim uh, joint so now whenever I move this control object uh, well there's nothing happening yet because it has no effect on the target object so let's do that I'm gonna hide the geometry gonna take the target object and I'm going to position constrain it to our control so now now it should work there you go so now we have a nice control for our clavicle you can also use it to rotate the clavicle forward and backward So that's it. We're done with the clavicle. Uh, you can take care of the other side. <clears throat> and uh, in the next video, we're going to see how to create an auto clavicle behavior so that when the character moves his arm around, the clavicle is going to uh, rotate following that motion. So let's do that in the next video. Okay, so I'm adding again the section to see how we can solve another problem that I found while working on the clavicle on the opposite side. And everything is set up, well, at least from the control standpoint, the, the objects are, are there. I have not done anything to them yet, but uh, I, I, I noticed something. I would like the animator to be able to grab both clavicle controls and move them at the same time to create symmetrical motion. However, the problem I have right now with that, if I go to local mode, is that they are moving in opposite directions, uh, both in Z and in Y. So that's because this guy has its axis uh, in going in the opposite direction. Okay, I could I could use world axes, but then I'm not going to be using the actual uh, local axes of the object, which can create. Uh, more difficulties for the animators. Uh, so I'm going to try to, to fix this so that we can have the uh, correct orientations in local mode. So what I will notice is that as this guy goes up, this guy goes down. And that's because for this guy going up, 
is to move in the negative z direction and for this guy it has to be in the positive z direction so what I need to do is uh, rotate him to to face a, a different direction so I'm gonna rotate him uh, 180 degrees and Y well that's not exactly what we wanted to do I'm gonna rotate him this way okay and uh, now I need to fix the shape uh, let's uh, check our display so minus 80 over here that's fine so let's see what we got so far let's move them now they're moving up and down correctly let's try backward and forward nope not yet so I still need to rotate this guy 180 degrees but on a different axis this time so this time is going to be on this one oops I need to use control to make sure I'm snapping to the correct amount and let's try that again there you go that's fine that's exactly what we want so now the animator can actually create symmetrical uh, motions on both sides of the character X won't work as you can see they're going both to the same side but uh, the clavicles don't stretch so we're not really going to be animating a lot in that direction so uh, it should be it should be okay so that uh, that that takes care of that the only thing I need to do is uh, make sure my transforms are zeroed for everything and I'm good to go now I have my clavicles working on both sides of the character well I need to finish connecting everything here but the main point of this video was to take care of the uh, controls so let's move on okay let's do the auto clavicle setup now and uh, what we're trying to do here is uh, we're going to create a rig that as the IK arm moves will rotate the clavicle following that movement and um, the logic behind this is if you uh, go and stand in front of a mirror and you take off your shirt so that you can clearly see your collarbone uh, you'll notice that as you raise your arms above your head and lower them your clavicle will be moving and uh, actually the clavicle is the one that allows our shoulders to raise and uh, contract and do different movements uh, without them the range of movement that we have in our arms would be pretty limited so uh, we're going to create a, a, a system that will allow the clavicle to rotate up and down as the arms move up and down and also uh, front and backwards and the animator will have control over the amount of motion that the autoclavicle system will have so this should help a lot with uh, getting more realistic motions out of your characters without too much trouble so let's go ahead and create the system so the first thing we're going to do is create a few locators we are going to need um, and we're going to need since this system will will have blendable weights we're gonna need a locator that just has exactly the same pose that our clavicle joint has which is gonna be a reference pose we're gonna need another locator that is always gonna be tracking the movements of our arm control and then we're gonna need a third locator that will blend in between both so you can go from no auto clavicle if, if the animator wants to turn it off to full auto clavicle if he wants to have the full range of motion which I don't think he will want because it's it's uh, it's just too much but um, that will be the way it works so let's create our locators uh, we're gonna create one locator over here and we're going to match it to our clavicle and this is going to be uh, the reference and uh, the reference uh, locator so let's call it locator uh, right clavicle reference and let's change its display properties 
I'm going to use a pyramid uh, pointing down the x-axis not solid let's make it smaller and actually I'm going to make uh, the base let's say 30 millimeters and I'm going to make it a hundred millimeters uh, long an X and with an offset of 50 so there it is that's my that's my reference for the uh, clavicle this is this isn't going to do anything it's not going to move it's not going to uh, do anything it's just going to be used as our reference so let's go ahead and create another locator and this one we're also going to match it onto the clavicle and this is the one that is actually going to be tracking the movements of our hand control so let's also give it a different shape and in this case I'm going to make this guy a cylinder and I'm gonna make him really 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 thin and also shorter actually it can be 200 millimeters and 100 millimeter offset and to make it easier to uh, identify in the scene let's change its color to something uh, kind of like there yeah there you go so this guy his name is going to be um, constraint or cl clavicle arm aim okay and what we're gonna do with him is we're going to um, direction constrain him towards the arm control so we're gonna select both compensation on and set our direction constraint so now whenever we move the hand control you see that that object is following it okay so that's great and lastly we're gonna create the object that will blend between both okay so let's create a third locator uh, also match it over here and we're gonna make this guy a uh, little box let's make him quite small he's the one who's going to be blending between both objects okay a little bit bigger than that maybe yeah something like like so um, and also let's give him a different color and we're gonna make him uh, sort of orange there you go actually that's not the best color to use because it's uh, easily mistaken for a selected object so let's make him more green ish yeah that's fine all right now we're going to need to rig all this but for the blending system to work all the objects that are participating in it must have the same uh, parent space so we have no offsets so we're gonna do that by creating a group locator with nothing selected so it goes to the origin there you go and now we're gonna match this group locator to our clavicle bone so now it's uh, local it's uh, center it's at the same place we're gonna call this GRP R auto auto clavicle okay and we're gonna take these guys and put them in there and we forgot to rename our uh, locator this one is the blending locator so this one is going to be locator r clavicle blend okay so the idea is that this guy will orient itself either against our reference locator or against the uh, clavicle aim locator and to test that let's just for now move this guy uh, to a different position 
Oh, looks like we never froze the transforms on him. So let's just do that. Let's check the other side. Yeah. There you go. So those controls are now frozen. Oh, well. I hadn't done that for any of these guys. So I'm going to quickly do that. There you go. Let's check the... Uh, yeah, the clavicle manual controls are fine. Okay, so I'm going to take him and let's move him over there. Okay, so now we have an offset between our reference object and the secondary object. Okay, and we're going to get this little guy to blend between both. So that's going to require a little bit of rigging in the schematic view. Uh, it's going to be a very simple rig, so don't worry about it. We're going to do more advanced stuff later on. But the way it's going to work is the following way. Let's select all three objects. And let's bring up our schematic view. And let's say add selected. So all three objects get added. So here is our reference. Here is... Uh, the clavicle aim object and here is the blend and we have here um, the uh, direction constraint that this guy has to uh, our friend over here so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to change certain channels transform channels on this object based on these other two okay so we're gonna grab this guy and we're gonna get its uh, world rotation and we're gonna get this guy's world rotation too okay actually you know what we're not gonna use that that's gonna be a little bit complicated we're gonna do something a lot simpler you will see and it's gonna work as well I'm gonna just bring this guy back to its original position so we start with no offsets all we're going to do is uh, use a weighted constraint on our friend here, okay? So we're going to select him and first our reference object. And we're going to add a rotation constraint with the compensation on. That's done. Now he's still selected. Now we're going to select the aim object. And we're going to add another rotation constraint, okay? So let's see what that is giving us. If you come to the schematic view, whenever you see a socket that has a yellow circle around it, that means that there are nodes connected to this socket, but we cannot see them. They're hidden. So if you double click there, they will be displayed. So we get this rotation constraint, okay? Which, as you can see, has two weights. That's because right now this object um, has a, const a rotation constraint referencing two different objects so if I move my arm control right now let's move it up here you will see that our cube did rotate but it's not fully pointing towards our aim locator and the reason is it's because it's weighted between these two objects so let's say that it's pointing 50% towards the pyramid 50% towards the cylinder okay so that's exactly what we want. We want to be able to um, point towards either of both, but we want to control how much we can go either way. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to take this direction constraint. We don't need to see it, so I'm going to hit backspace. Uh, we'll hide it. Don't hit delete. Delete will actually delete it from the scene. Hit backspace. And now with our, um, our constraint here, we're going to change these weight channels, okay? So the way this is going to work is uh, we need to create um, a control somewhere in the scene so that the animator can change these weights. I'm not going to create it right now because I don't know where that control is going to be. So I'm going to create a temporary uh, utility node. Or, uh, well, I call them utility nodes. A temporary node here in the graph that will hold a temporary weight value for me to use. Okay, so for that purpose, since there is no uh, constant node in Modo, I usually just go and do a math add 
and uh, type in my value as one of the inputs for the uh, add operator since adding anything to zero will give you the value you typed in so this is going to be my 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 weight so let's rename this to UTI for utility node uh, right autoclavicle weight okay so what I want to do is to be able to blend in between both I would like the uh, whenever the reference channel is weighted to 1 I want the aim channel to be 0 and vice versa whenever this guy is uh, 1 this guy should be 0 and I want this guy to determine the weight for the aim channel because um, well of course as I, as I bring up this value I want the arm to be pointing towards the autoclavicle uh, direction. So I'm going to directly wire this into the arm aim weight channel. So as you can see now, it's weighted towards that. It changed a little bit. And to have this guy be the inverse value in the 0 to 1 scale, I have to do a subtraction. So I'm going to go to my math nodes. There's a subtract node. And I'm going to say it's going to be 1 minus whatever value I have over here because 1 minus 0.2 is going to be 0.8 over here okay if this is 0 1 minus 0 is going to give me 1 so I can weight this to 1 and this guy would be 0 if this guy would be 1 then 1 minus 1 would be 0 so this channel is going to be 0 while this one is 1 so that's how we blend these guys together so now I'm just going to connect this guy here and as you can see if I change our value to zero. The cube points towards the pyramid. If I change it to one, it points towards the cylinder. And I can decide which value I'm using for to determine how much autoclavical behavior I'm gonna have. So as I move this, I don't think you can see it over there, but the little cube is moving. Um, you will see it more clearly in a second. Let's reset this guy's position. So now that this is rigged, I can actually connect my clavicle joint onto it. So let's go back to our scene. And uh, let's find everything. First, we're going to take this autoclavicle group. Let's see where we're going to put it. Let's bring up our joint. Uh, find it over here. Here it is. So we have our uh, manual clavicle and then we have this constraint over here which is controlled by this object. So we're going to take our group and make it a, ch a child of that object. And the reason is uh, we want to layer both effects. We want to have the autoclavicle behavior but also retain manual control over the clavicle at the same time. So that way the animator would have the autoclavicle as, as the characters move in, but he can still go and grab the control and move the shoulders up and down. So we're going to take this guy, make him a child of this guy. And now we're going to take the, uh, the joint and we are going to make him a child of the blend locator. Okay, so that way, when I select my arm and I move it, you can see the clavicle doing its thing. Okay, and I can still go and manually move the entire thing any way I want. Okay, so I can shrug the shoulder and then the character decides he wants to move his arm some more and you still have the autoclavicle effect. So that's pretty much the autoclavicle um, rig done. And the nice thing is I can still come in here and change this value. Let's say 0 0.4 will give us a more pronounced effect. I can actually go all the way to 1, which is way too much. But you can do it. So... That's that's it. That's the autoclavicle system. Uh, and now you can do it on the other side. As you saw, this is uh, quite simple. And of course, we're not going to leave this here in the schematic view. At some point, 
we're going to replace this with a channel on an actual object in the scene so that the animator has easy access to it. So that's it. Let's uh, continue. And uh, we're going to work on a different part of the rig for the next video.